And yes, how are you doing? Great. I'm good. How are you? I'm good as well. Thanks. That's good. And you have a small but mighty group today. All right. There's one other who may also join as well. And then we also record and post it as well so students can watch afterwards. Great. Because many of the time just doesn't work for them. So we'll post it <laughs> online. And then there's a, actually, they're pretty popular afterwards too, which is great. So kind of awesome. get a double whammy. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So I'll do a quick introduction and then we'll we'll give the other student two minutes or so to pop in and then we can kind of get started um, with Fian and Kaylin. Um, so I'm Kaylin Gordner. So I'm the alumni engagement officer in the Faculty of Health. So first off, thanks so much for agreeing to take this time to hang out with us here and teach some students, you know, some awesome things about your career path, how you landed, um, you know, where you are and then sort of explain, you know, about what Waterloo really did for you. Um, a lot of people did submit questions ahead of time as well. So I've curated a list of kind of those questions too. Right. So we can go through those. Um, and Vianne and Kaylin may also have questions too that they can ask live as well. Um, and that's kind of the way that it'll go. So um, typically like we'll take anywhere, like probably half hour or so to uh, to go through, through some things depending on the, the level of questions. And um, yeah, it's kind of a nice informal opportunity to to have conversations with some some like-minded people, hopefully. That sounds great. I'm excited. Perfect. Vian and Kaylin, do you want to do quick intros before we kind of kick off the, the beginning of it? Sure, I'll start. So my name is Vian. I'm Caitlin's co-op student for the term. I'm the alumni advancement assistant. Um, so yeah, I'm going into third year in January, and this is my second co-op term. What program are you in? Health sciences. Great. I'm also doing a minor in medical physiology, and I'm doing a preclinical specialization. So yeah, I'm studying a lot. My schedule is like super packed. <laughs> Sounds like a yeah. packed schedule. Oh, exciting. Great. Did you want to introduce yourself, Kaylin? Yeah, sure. So I'm a, I'm a third year um, health science student. I'm doing a minor in gerontology and medical physiology. I'm currently in my second co-op term as a chiropractic assistant. And um, yeah. Great. Um, so just so the both of you, all three of you know, um, as I mentioned just more formally though, this is being recorded. Um, Vian will transcribe it and then post it to um, to the website afterwards. So Vian kind of gets double where she gets to be a co-op student and gets to listen from someone from her program, which is great. So um, I'm glad you're able to make it. All right, so let's start things off here. So again, first and foremost, thanks again, everyone for joining us here. We're looking forward to a fun-filled hour with uh, with Heather here for her to explain a little bit more about her career path, how she's gotten to where she is, um, and share some of her knowledge with us, which we're really, really excited about. Um, as we kind of get started here, I'd just like to start off by doing a quick territory, territorial acknowledgement um, to acknowledge that the University of Waterloo um, acknowledges that much of our work takes place on the territory, traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabeg and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our campus is situated on the Haldeman Track, the land granted to the Six Nations that includes six miles of each side of the Grand River. Um, I'm very fortunate enough in our office here that we have um, Elder, Ma Elder Maegan Henry who works in our office, and he is actually um, one of our knowledge keepers on campus, or I think the knowledge keeper on campus actually. Uh, so he is a wealth of knowledge, and I've learned so much from so much from him um, over informal conversations at the lunch table, and also attending many of the events that he offers. So I encourage you to um, get out to any of those. Events Events if you're able to as well, and hear from Elder Megan Henry because he is um, just such an interesting, uh, interesting gentleman to listen from. But let's pass things over here to Heather. So Heather, thanks so much for joining us. We're happy to have you here. I'm um, looking forward to, uh, to spending some time with you. I will pass it over to you to do a quick introduction of you know your journey through through Waterloo and a little bit about where you are now. That sounds great. Thanks, Caitlin. Well, thanks for having me. It's kind of exciting to be back in a way and be able to share some of this uh, journey that I've been on. So I'll um, sort of provide a, a, yeah, a bit of context. So I am a grad of Waterloo and I took the kinesiology program there and then afterwards completed my master's of science in public health there as well. And I started um, working in the corporate world afterwards. I started working in public health 
and did that for a couple of years and then transitioned. I always had an interest in uh, mental health and have a psych minor as well. So I went um, to work more in mental health and I worked at Canada's largest mental health hospital, CAMH. And I worked there for uh, for a couple of years. And ironically, during that time, my mental health was probably at its worst and I was really struggling. I had always sort of had anxiety, but there was a lot of anxiety and self-doubt during that time. So uh, now sort of in tandem with that, while I was working at CAMH um, and all in the corporate world, I was on this journey to learn how to manage my own mental health and manage anxiety naturally. So once I sort of figured out the pieces of the puzzle for that, then I kind of, in a way you could say I, I switched careers, um, but I switched to become an entrepreneur and started my own company to then teach others how to manage uh, anxiety and um, and put these sort of holistic pieces of the puzzle that I, that I figured out. Um, and so you could sort of say I switched careers, but in a way, if I kind of like look back and, you know, connect the dots in reverse, it's, it's all related. Uh, like right now I'm um, working in the area of uh, being a nutritionist and yoga and meditation teacher. But when I teach yoga, I use my kinesiology degree because understanding the human body, as you can imagine in yoga is, you know, immensely helpful. And when I'm looking up nutrients to decide like what nutrients are anti-anxiety, then I'm using my critical skills, my critical analyzing skills that I learned, you know, how to research, uh, read research articles properly that I learned about in my master's of science. So I feel like I use the pieces that I've learned every day from Waterloo, but I kind of apply them differently now and have um, a slightly different career path. And um, it might spark some questions. So I'll sort of share like how my work typically functions. So I, my business has kind of two main arms. Um, one side of the business is working um, with companies in corporate wellness. So I work with a lot of Fortune 500 companies and some smaller boutique businesses as well, but I provide their wellness programming. So I might do wellness seminars, lunch and learns, meditation sessions, yoga classes um, to help support employees and keep them well and productive. And then the other side of the business is um, either one-on-one -on -one coaching with clients, or I just launched an app actually that's called Cultivating Calm. That's a holistic anxiety support app. So it's sort of those two things coming together to help support people more broadly, but then also um, help them at the individual level one-on-one. -on -one. And the goal is impact, big impact to help with anxiety. That's amazing. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Heather. I think it's always unique to hear kind of, um, you know, your path to where you've gotten. And this might not be the end of your path, right? Like you're still so early in your career, who knows? And it's so interesting to, yeah, understand that pivots happen and people make changes. And typically there's some relation back to the start, no matter where you are. So that's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. I'm going to kick things off with a question that was submitted previously, and then we'll open up the floor. Um, can you tell me about some of the takeaways that you took from Waterloo or some of the learnings that you felt like were really, really, um, you know, standalone uh, from the University of Waterloo? Hmm. I think what I learned attending Waterloo is because the program there, the kinesiology program is so highly regarded that I learned that that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Having that clout and like that name uh, goes a long way that I even see it now, like on LinkedIn, I have my own company and everything, but if an employer uh, or somebody that I'm going to work with for corporate wellness, if they see that I've gone to Waterloo and they see that like um, master's level education as well, that already puts me in front of so many people. And there's that clout behind it. And there's that also that um, understanding that that means you're ready to work, right? You can put in the work, you can put in the effort, you know how to, to learn uh, and how to really follow through. So that's definitely a key piece is just having that uh, in my back pocket, I think has helped me succeed. And then, you know, like any other higher education, uh, certainly my master's has instilled in me the value of hard work. And I remember during it, there were many times that I was like, this is too much. Like, I don't know if I can do this. And then, um, perseverance at just having to like buckle down and get the work done. And during my master's, I was fortunate enough to work with a great professor, David Hammond, and um, he helped me coordinate my very own study, like my, like with participants and running it on my own. I had research assistants that I hired and never would I thought I would have that level of responsibility, but that helped boost my confidence a lot to really see that um, I, you know, I, I could handle this so that when I went out into the working world, I already had that experience under my belt, which is so helpful. 
Yeah, that's awesome. All right, I'll open it up to the other two. Do either of you have questions you want to pop in here for Heather? Um, I have one question. Could you tell us a little bit more about pursuing a master's? I've been looking into that recently, and I just want to get your perspective on it. Sure, yeah, and I'll give you a very honest perspective because I kind of fell into the master's. It was more like I graduated with kinesiology and I was like, what do I do with a kinesiology degree if I'm not going to be an actual kinesiologist? And I, I, I didn't think that was the path. So I kind of fell into it because I was like, well, like, you know, what else, what else should I do? Um, and so I applied and I believe I got some, I forget what they're called now, but I got some scholarships to basically cover the education of the master's. Um, and I found a professor that I really liked and I really understood his research and he did a lot of work in menu labeling um, and, and public health in general. So I found a professor that had really interesting research and um, I remember meeting with him beforehand and he said, you know, like, come into the lab and talk to some of my students because then you'll get a sense of what it's really like to work with me. Um, and that, that was the best thing I could have done was really like been able to ask those questions and connect with his current students who all had such glowing recommendations for him. So, um, I, yeah, I, I went for it. And what I have found is that while I might not directly use my masters of science every day, I use those transferable skills of being, you know, critical, analytical, everything that I do in my business is evidence-based because I learned how to do that from the masters. And it certainly gets you a foot in the door at a lot of different companies if you have that um, that level of, of education. So I will say that it was, it was a very challenging program. Um, in some ways it was self-directed in that, you know, certain aspects of it, it's, it's not where someone's like, you know, pulling you along and like you have to want to be there. But I think the value uh, that I've received from it comes back like tenfold. Um, what was your research on during your master's? Yeah, so curious. I, yeah, it's a great question. I did research um, in the area of menu labeling. So when you're seeing calories up on menus in restaurants and my uh, specific talk topic was about how do people with uh, pre-eating disorders or, or people who are at risk of eating disorders, how do they interpret? Um, those types of calorie labels, like, is that damaging to them? Um, and what we found was, was no, uh, but it was an, an interesting area of research because it felt very novel. I mean, menu labeling was like just kind of starting to come in at that time. So it was exciting to do, and nobody had really looked at this type of population before. So it felt like it felt to me like it was, it was important research and, um, I was able to publish, uh, a paper out of it and um, publish another one during my master's as well. And then um, a few more since then, uh, which always looks good behind your name. <laughs> well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Galen, do you have any questions for Heather? Um, yes. Um, so what are some of the strategies you used um, to connect with your like professors when pursuing your master's? Hmm. Uh, meaning like during the application process? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This feels so many years ago. So this was like 2011. So over 10 years ago now uh, when I started my master's. So I remember for me, um, I didn't have a long list of professors that I wanted to work with. I had taken this certain professor's class, um, one of his health classes, and thought it was so engaging and how he shared information made it so digestible and it made me want to learn that I was like, oh, this person is so inspiring. I would really want to work with them. And so I reached out to them and then they connected me with um, some of their students so that I could talk to them. And we and I sort of gave an idea of like what I would like to research. So I had a little bit of forethought behind it. Um, because typically a professor will have a certain area that is their expertise. And so you want to make sure that that area kind of fits with what you want to do. Right. Um, and that their methodologies are in line with what you want to do, because this was more quantitative research, but uh, perhaps another professor professor would be more in the qualitative realm. So you kind of want to know, like, 
you know, how, what you're interested in finding out and how you're interested in going about it. And then um, it's great if you've taken a course of the professor because you get a sense for their personality and what they're like. And then you can start to develop that uh, relationship because I think um, during my master's, there was that um, that need to work together, right? And we would have like weekly touch bases. And so I wanted to work with someone that I felt like cared about my growth. And certainly that was the case with Dr. Hammond. Um, and I wanted to work with someone that was doing like kind of cutting edge and interesting research. So I would suggest sort of, you know, making a bit of a short list to decide like, and you can look up like the, the papers that they publish too and see like, is this interesting research? Like, do I want to be working with this person? And even better if you can take a class with them and get a more in-depth sense of them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any follow-up or anything to that, Keelan? None that I have like currently in mind right now, but that was a, that was really insightful. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I have a couple questions here um, and then I'll go back to the two of you as well. Was there anything that you didn't learn at Waterloo that you wish you would have been able to learn in your undergrad and master's? Hmm. I think now that my, if I'm looking back at the career path and seeing, you know, how it started with kin and then moved into uh, public health and then more mental health. And then now I've gone this kind of route of entrepreneurship. I wish I maybe took some business courses because I had this foundational knowledge of like science and, you know, the human body and health and all that. But even if I was an employee of a company, like even just learning how to, you know, um, market yourself to, to get hired. I mean, that's a, that's a skill or learning, um, you know, some of the more, let me say soft skills, but like, you know, we all know how important they are, but, um, things like communication and how to interact with colleagues, like that can help push you ahead in your career. So I maybe wish I spent a little bit more time cultivating that and then really taking some business courses um, because when I kind of switched careers and got my nutrition diploma, I got a little taste of it in that. They gave us like one business course, but afterwards I was like, great, I'm open for business. But unless I knew how to market myself, like at the start, it like nobody was coming. <laughs> I wasn't making money from it. It was when I learned um, how to do sales and how to um, yeah, really, really market like the solution and what I had to offer for people. That's when the business started to grow. No, that's awesome. And that, that makes total sense. So thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. All right. I have another question here. They said, Heather, how was the transition from university kin degree to nutrition? I always found it hard to be prepared to go that way from this degree. Did you take nutrition courses from Waterloo in order to prepare for this? Okay, let me think back. So I remember having, I always had an interest in nutrition and in high school I had taken some um, nutrition courses and actually just like a little side story. Um, when I was in high school, I wanted to uh, apply to university and I was looking at, you know, the um, requirements that you need to get into university. And I remember one of them recommended by Waterloo was um, physics. You needed like grade 12 physics. And my first day in grade 12 physics, um, I did a, like a little test and they said, if you don't do well in this test, if you don't know what you're doing, then like you should probably drop this class. Well, I stood right up from that test and walked straight to the office and I said, I need to drop this course. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know physics. And the only other course that was available that I could transition into was a nutrition course. And so I ended up taking that nutrition course and absolutely loved it. And I thought I need to, you know, dive deeper into this. Um, no, it was fine to get into Waterloo because I had I had chemistry and other requirements, so it was okay. Um, but I always had an interest in nutrition, and I I can't remember to be honest in the undergrad kin program if there is nutrition. I feel like I took a course in it. Um, okay, but it was sort of after I graduated from that and did the master's that then I started a nutrition diploma on the side to become a holistic nutritionist. And I was sort of debating like dietitian versus nutritionist, but I didn't want to go back to like a formal university program and do dietetics because it felt like I already had um, somewhat of a, a foundation and I wanted to go more the natural route. 
So for me, it re did require more schooling to become a nutritionist. And um, I did it while working full time. So I had my job at, um, I started when I was working in public health at Public Health Ontario. So I would work like nine to five and then I would come home and I would study for like two, three hours. And the diploma on the side took me about two years to complete. So it was certainly challenging and required a lot of fortitude to study on the weekends and, uh, and, and push through to get that diploma. But it felt very aligned for me to be moving to uh, more in the realm of nutrition um, and specifically like mental health nutrition was where I had interest. So um, it still felt like a natural progression to me. Like kinesiology gave me the foundational pieces of understanding the body. And then when I moved more into nutrition, then I could understand, well, how do the nutrients interact with the body? And since I already had that piece, I was well ahead of a lot of um, students in my class because they had never taken chemistry and I had taken that at Waterloo, right? They had never taken like biology and I had all of these pieces already in place. So uh, it, yeah, it, it did feel like a natural progression to me and one that I was glad that I had those foundational courses to understand the body because then I could uh, go deeper with it for nutrition. No, oh, that's great. Thank you. Vian or Kaylin, any questions for the two of you? I have a question. Um, coming from like a healthcare background, what would you say like your main marketing advice is like for your business? Like aside from like having like a really good LinkedIn and like having that good background, like how would you like reach out to your clients and get them? Mm, okay. So what I have figured out through um, a couple of years now running my own business is that it's been really important to identify and understand sort of my ideal client. And that could be at the corporate setting of what companies are looking for um, wellness and, or it could be more in the individual level and someone who's struggling with anxiety like what are they struggling with specifically? So to understand um, typically what we call pain points, which is I, uh, most of my work is with um, high functioning anxiety. So these are the people who are over analyzers, overthinkers, perfectionists, people pleasers. And, um, and to sort of understand like what are some of these things that these types of people who that was me. Um, what are some of the things that they struggle with? So feeling not good enough, feeling like they're, you know, they have this potential, but they don't know how to get there, feeling like they're exhausted because they're worrying all the time. Um, what I have found to be very effective is to understand those types of issues and pain points that people are experiencing. And then being able to help them see, like, it doesn't have to be like that. Like there is another way, you know, I have this, this solution, this uh, offering that's going to get you more to where towards where you want to be. So helping people feel inspired about their life is um, sort of my main goal when I'm meeting with them is to help them see like, you know, what could your life be like if you didn't have anxiety or if you weren't crushed with self-doubt all the time and imposter syndrome, like where could you get to? What could you accomplish? Um, I found that that has been a very sort of transformative marketing technique to use is help people see where they want to get to and the fact that what you offer can help get them there. Thank you. Mm -hmm, you're welcome. Great question. All right. I kind of have two that go hand in hand here. So I'll ask one and then I'll ask the other one um, second. What would you say to someone who isn't sure what they want to do after university? Oh gosh. <laughs> I mean, that was, yeah, that was, that was me like coming out with certainly my undergrad coming out with a kinesiology degree and being like, what? now what what does this get me um and what i would recommend is what i tell a lot of my clients is to fail forward is to just try different things and figure out what works because i think for a lot of people when they take a look back at their career and mind you like i feel like i'm still fairly early in my career but even if i look back i can see already the transitions the tweaks that i've made like starting out in public health because that was what the master's was in. And then realizing, you know, that's not quite the right fit. But when I was working in public health, I had an initiative at the time that was like a joint initiative 
public health and mental health. And I thought, oh, this mental health, that's pretty cool. And that's how I got the job in mental health is I worked with people from CAMH on that uh, project and they liked my work and then sort of like poached me in a way to start working there. So then I realized, oh, okay, like I like mental health. This is great, but I want specifically to focus on anxiety because I've been there. I get it. I know how hard it is. And then I could sort of start to transition into that. So I would suggest to just be open to trying lots of different things. See what kind of lights your soul up, what feels good when you um, try it and just be open to things shifting. Like I always thought like, okay, I will be, you know, in this box of kinesiology and that is what I will do, right? It will be something like exercise related, but I just had to be open to the fact that it could shift, that something else made me feel more lit up and made me more excited to um, change more into like this other side of things. So try lots, fail forward, fail often, because each failure is really just a lesson that's going to help you move and move towards that next step. I like that. That's a good answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this one kind of takes along with that a little bit. So you answered a bit, and I think it's just directed at kind of their career change that you have. But what advice would you give to a student if they get into a job they're unsure of and want to switch careers? I think sometimes people feel like once they've chosen a job, they need to stay with it. And there's this kind of like, I'm going to call it false loyalty that comes up. And people feel like once I start with a company, I, you know, it's going to look bad on my resume if I change. The, my philosophy is that your mental health is the most important thing. So if you are not happy with something in your life, then change it. You could, you know, keep that job for a bit while you're searching for something else. But I think that needs to be uh, the number one priority is what is going to make you um, you happiest. So, and another thing I would say is like, you know, sometimes we, we feel like we have to be loyal to the company, but the reality is if you, you know, left that job, they would replace you like that. If you weren't doing a good job in that role, they would replace you like that. Like there doesn't need to be this sense of loyalty to a company because, and even like, you know, smaller, more family oriented companies. I, I still think it's the same thing. I think at the end of the day, you don't owe anybody anything. You have to do what's best for you. And if that means moving on to another role, another company, um, then, then do that. And not to say that you have to burn bridges and, you know, do it in a disrespectful way. I think there's a way that you can still let them know this isn't the right fit for me and I'm going to be moving on. No, absolutely. That's great advice. Thank you for sharing. Um, Vian or Kaylin, any questions sparked from you before I keep trucking away here? Okay, I have one. I think Vian, you submitted this one actually, but you just might not remember it. Um, do you have any advice for kin or health students wanting to pursue a career in business? And could you describe your experience in business coming from a healthcare background? Mm -hmm. I think you know, what I had, what I wish that I had done knowing that now I am more in like a business <clears throat> oriented role. Um, it, meanwhile, like, you know, being of, of service and providing that like healthcare perspective to people. But I think I had, I think I wish that I had dived more into the business side of things. So whether that means like, while you're in school, listening to podcasts that are about uh, marketing and business, or whether that means investing in yourself and doing a training that's going to get you a bit of an understanding of the fundamentals of economics, whether that means taking a course at Waterloo, that's going to be econ or something. Um, Cause I, I do wish I had a bit of that foundation. I felt like when I transitioned to starting my own company, I was like, just flying by the seat of my pants. Like <laughs> I just had no idea what I was doing. Uh, so I wish I did have a little bit of, um, of that foundation and that knowledge to, to back me up. But I think that like health and business can absolutely go hand in hand and that they're very intertwined. Like I feel very confident you know, selling my services to people because I know that they're evidence-based and because I know that I have, um, a service that's going to help people and that's going to have impact on the world. I think that's the unique thing about working in health, but also having um, a business is that you get to provide something to people that's going to change their lives. Like, and that's an incredible honor to be able to do. Not many companies have that 
uh, that goal of like bettering society, bettering humanity. So uh, it's a real privilege to be able to do this work and be of service to others. So I like to lean into that from the health side of things, knowing that I'm um, providing value to people and trying to have impact. Uh, but then also, you know, using that business mind of like, okay, but if I want to have impact, how can I do that? Right. These are the sales tactics. I need to use the marketing techniques, my, you know, my marketing plan, my business plan, like that's the, the nuts and bolts. That's like the concrete pieces that helps deliver this vision of having impact and, and helping people be healthy. Does that answer your question, man? Did you have anything else to go on top of that? No, that was really good. Awesome. Great. All right. Helpful. I have one more formal question here. We'll open it back up and then we'll kind of do a wrap up if there's no more. Um, were you involved in extracurriculars? Did you have a job or were there things that you did outside of the classroom? And if so, how did you manage your time effectively? Oh, gosh, <laughs> that's a great question. So while I was in school, I remember in the summers, I wasn't in co-op, I was just in regular. Um, and while uh, during the summers, I had a job. And the first year after uh, my first year, I applied for a grant, it was an NSERC grant, and got that. And so my first summer was working in a biomechanics laboratory uh, under that NSERC grant, which was great because a lot of my friends were working more like minimum wage at, um, you know, restaurants and, and things. And I was earning like pretty decent money under this grant. So that then transitioned into um, the next year, I think, getting a different, uh, same company, like same NSERC, but different professor and another grant. And then that kind of transitioned into some part-time work during the school year with that professor uh, as a research assistant. So I had a little bit of that coming in. And then at one point I did have another job. Uh, I was working at Good Life and um, and uh, um, not as a, a personal trainer, but as like a front desk kind of staff. Um, so that was related to the kinesiology degree, which is great. Uh, and that, but I did find it to be like a little bit much when I was trying to manage school and class. And then sometimes after class, I would go work in the evenings or I would work on the weekends when I wanted to be relaxing or hanging out with friends or studying more likely. So um, it was challenging to manage. I think for myself, I had to really identify like what are my priorities and see, okay, right now school is the priority. So I'm going to pull back a bit on work or um, sometimes when I was working like with a professor uh, as an RA on campus, it was pretty easy because I didn't have much of a commute and it was just like convenient to get to. Um, and it really helped further the goals of like initially um, being in academia because I had my name on research papers because of it, um, because I was in the lab and learning research techniques. And then that would help me in my uh, classwork because I understood like the techniques that people were, you know, that we were reading about. So it, it was definitely beneficial to have something on the side both from an experience perspective um, and money. And it did kind of give me a leg up when I was starting to uh, get more into the working world because I had such great glowing references from people um, in academia and I had my name on papers and just a you know, better like sense of connection. So it's great to do something if you can get something that's like related to um, your field because it is gonna give you experience or if you're in the co-op program, great, because you're gonna have all of that juicy experience. Um, but there is there is a trade-off of being able to manage time. And so I had to be really smart about like when I was studying, going all in and really studying and removing distractions because I knew that I wasn't gonna get, you know, endless uninterrupted hours because I had work to get to. So just finding that balance I think was key for me. Yeah, that's great. Definitely true. There's going to be times where you're going to be pulled, I think, in multiple directions. It's just figuring, you know, at the end of the day, what what really does mean the most. Yeah, and, absolutely. Okay, Vian or Keelan, any last questions from you before we wrap things up? Awesome. Anything else you want to add, Heather, before we before we finish? You're well, just a it? huge thank you for bringing me on. This felt so nostalgic to kind of no. think back of, you know, my time no. at Waterloo. I always think so fondly of it and uh, all the great experience that um, that it's given me and it's what I've taken, you know, to be able to have this um, career path and to sort of like navigate and figure things out along the way. It's been 
it's been an exciting journey so far. And I mean, yeah, who knows? Things might might change <laughs> in, in the future, but um, so pleased with where it's taken me so far. Absolutely. Well, yes, thank you so much for spending time with us here this evening. It's so nice to hear the different perspectives from alumni and, um, you know, get a feel for there's not just one career path or one place you have to end up, right? Even from one degree, you'll find so many different opportunities and so many different jobs. So thank you so much for spending some time here with us today. It was lovely to meet you. Best of luck as you continue on with your career. And um, I'm sure the students here and the students who will watch later will absolutely take away many points from, from what you've said today. So I appreciate that. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, thanks for the course. questions. Yeah, no, there was there was actually there was quite a few, which was great. great. So I'm glad that they oh, were. Good. Yeah, and um, such great answers. So it was lovely to hear. Right. Good. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well, I will let everybody go. Thanks so much for taking some time here, and we will chat again soon. All right. Bye, okay. everyone. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome.